Estonian exited the FA Trophy here at uh, Molden and Tiptree, a, a 3-2 defeat. Um, came a lot, a lot of spirit in the second half there, but was the was the damage done in the first half? I think that's fair to say. I think um, I think if you analyse the first half um, tactically, we were on point for the first 15 minutes. Um, we knew that they would be a really dangerous uh, opponent in counter-attack and there's no doubt that their, their strikers are out. There's no doubt about that. But the first 15 minutes, I think, or, or let's say the way that we opened the game in the early exchanges, I thought the players did, did very well. There was a big control. But um, when the game just started opening up, uh, we, had, we had some mistakes. Uh, and as a consequence of, of, of the mistakes, I think we have to try to stop the cross. We have to, we have to be able to defend our penalty area better. I, I don't think that's an unfair criticism to say that, but I think we do have to defend the penalty area better. And we were punished for that by a really confident team who would have been in our league, should have been in our league, but for lockdown last year. Um, but at half time, at half time, I felt that we could still change it around if we moved one or two things around tactically. You saw the tactical changes on half hour that allowed me to go and do what I wanted. And I think that the second half, um, the second half, the boys played very well. They played with a great mentality. They played with a great spirit. They played with an amazing personality. And you could have a big argument to say that desire and that spirit and the way that they they run for the club that deserved something and I think it did but I would equally say it's very difficult for me to come on here and say that we deserved anything when you concede another goal through a mistake and really uh, the penalty was football suicide it's the truth the uh, the third goal not not the penalty the uh... yeah well both both goals I th I, th I think I beg your pardon um, the third goal is a, is a mistake the 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 the, uh, the, the sending card. off yeah. I, do, I beg your pardon the, 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 yes you're quite right the the red card is a player that wants to do so well he has eyes for the ball he's playing on emotion the best defenders they play with their heart they play with their head and I'm afraid that is a little bit suicidal to do that. Does that not happen if we haven't conceded a third goal two minutes beforehand? Are those two linked? You know, we've, think so. we've been coming back into the game and suddenly it, it feels I, like I, all's done. I, I think so. I, I think that that's, that's probably frustration on Simon's part of not starting the game. Um, and people can say to me today, you should have started with Simon, you should have started with Corey. Yeah, I would, I would, I would understand that entirely. I, I, would, I would accept that. Uh, so I think it's a little bit of frustration on Simon's part. But I, you know, I'm not going to stand here and, and criticise Simon. He's a brilliant captain for us and um, he leads by example in, in every single way for Kingstonian. So, yeah, we'll forgive him, but we, we can't be blinded to the fact that I think we've played 10 competitive games, eight in the league, two in the, uh, in the Cups. I think that's right. And we've had four red cards. You can't, you can't do that. There comes a point when you think, no, that's that's not acceptable. So we have to look at it. You mentioned the, um, the substitutions. Um, I guess when the team came out, some people might have been surprised to see um, Simon Cooper as captain on the bench and, and Corey, who again has shown us what he's capable of with two goals in the second half. Both of them named on the bench. Um, what was behind that decision? Yeah, I understand why people would be surprised. So so let's let's talk about that. Um, first of all, with Simon. I want to stress that it was nothing to do with um, the mistake uh, last week at Chezan. Not at all. Simon's worked very hard in training all this week, and like everybody else, has done very well. But what we have seen recently, we, we've, we've seen it in Chezan, we've seen it um, in Enfield with Billy Bricknell, where we have one dominant centre-half, and we have someone with, a, with a, uh, different qualities and not quite the physical presence of, of football. So when you play against someone that's six for eight, like the guy was today, if he looks to play on Simon, then that can strategically cause us a few issues. So I decided with Harry, who's back to fitness and has again done very well, to add a little bit more physicality to 
the central defensive area to try to nullify the number nine. And then you look at the right back position. And I think everybody would say Javan's done very well. So Javan would, would, would need to keep his place. With Corey, this is one of the dilemmas of, of, of the whole season for me. This is something that we're working towards a different idea. We're working towards a, um, a different shape. But we can't employ that shape until certain players are fit and available again. So we maintain with the 4 2 3 1. And so in 4 2 3 1, we can put Elliot as the 10. We've done that before. We did it in Merston. We did it at Horn Church. But I don't think it's worked quite as I would like. And I think everybody would say, again, Tom Howard has, deserves a chance because Tom Howard's come in, been great this week on the training ground. He's made a big impact in games, I think, that he deserved his chance to play. So then it became Elliot v Corey. And Elliot did very well last week. Let's not forget, Elliot got his goal last week. Elliot did everything that I asked of him. For me to play Corey, I have to look Elliot in the eye and explain he's not playing. I think that would have been unfair on Elliot. But, and it's a big but, what we've seen today is, I think that I would have to say, yeah, I think that I've had that wrong. I think that Simon did very well when he came on. And we have to quickly fast track to a position where Elliot and Corey are both on the pitch. So, yeah, it, it was, um, you know, this is football management. You, you, you make good decisions. And, for example, if, if, if we equalise today, as we should have done, then it's, uh, the manager's made great decisions. He's, he's changed the system. And if you lose, you accept the criticism. And I accept the criticism of, of Simon. wasn't a reflection of him. I accept the criticism of Corey. wasn't it a, a reflection on him. It was a tactical decision by me, which didn't work today. Frustrating with those tactical decisions in mind that it's Harry that's been beaten twice in the air. So absolutely. The goals. It, it, absolutely. Um, you can't have that. You can't have that. Look, if, if I'm six foot one, which I'm not, uh, and I'm marking someone that's six foot five, it is a handful. And you have to accept you can't win every ball, and you have to accept with those aerial duels, there's two things that you must do. A, you must stop the cross and work really hard to stop the supply, and we didn't do that well enough. And B, if you can't win the header, you have to jump into the guy, you have to upset the guy, you have to interrupt the guy. So he might win the header but the header ceases to become a good connection and a dangerous header. And that all goes down to the same thing. You have to defend your box better. And we were punished. And all the good things in the first half, of which there were many in the early exchanges, the good things were, were absolutely nullified by disappointing defending, I think it's fair to say. You mentioned um, trying to work out how the team works with both Corey and Elliot in it. There's a, there's a decent chance you might have quite a while to, to think about what that looks like depending on what Boris is about to announce at the time of recording. Um, what is your expectation, if, if the country was to go into a, a full lockdown again, which as I say, viewers, you'll know more than we would at this stage, is your expectation that that takes the league with it? That's a metaphor for what's happening. <laughs> <season, laughs> um, yeah, obviously, you know, I, I, um, I've read the papers in the same way, listened to the news in the same way everybody else has, and there seems to be two trains of thought. One is that uh, a tier four will be introduced, uh, in which case we would continue to play. And there's another train of thought that we might be locked down now for a month. Um, and that's really difficult. So the answer is, is that um, who knows what's going to happen. If, if it's a lockdown, let's hope it's, it's, a, it's a brief one, it's a circuit break, and we can get back in December and, and carry on the work. Um, but, you know, who, who's to say? I, I, uh, I couldn't, couldn't answer the question because I, I, I like everybody else. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, perhaps by the time people are watching, they'll know. Um, tough loss today. Some good stuff, some bad stuff, but we'll see you at some point soon. Yeah, listen, um, and, and just to finish, uh, it's, we're really disappointed to lose and we're really disappointed to have gone out of the cup competitions and we're really disappointed that um, the support that that we were given and a long way from home wasn't rewarded. What I would say today is I think that the one thing for the Kingstonian supporters is is that if they if they want to blame me for selection, I, I get that. I understand that. Um, that's the life of a football manager. But don't certainly don't 
put the criticism on these players because what, what you've seen today is even with 10 men, they are running through a brick wall for the club. And yes, there's mistakes and there's things to work on. And today is a little bit synonymous of where we are. There's so many good teams and we're that far away from being a really good team. But we have to work hard to play without mistakes and bridge the gap. And if we do that, I think that um, this team will realise their objectives and really fight for promotion. Right. Well, see you soon. Thank you.